What's up guys, Controversy here and welcome back to the channel. So today marks the start of the Year of the Rabbit event. And in this event, you can get some pretty cool rewards like weapon charm, a souvenir, and even an echo skin. You can also unlock the legendary mass dancer skin for Moira by watching your favorite Twitch streamer, which I hope that's me, alongside the Lions Roar victory pose. Capture the Flag has already started in competitive, but they did happen to add Capture the Flag Blitz, which is a Capture the Flag arcade brawl. The flag will be placed near the center of the map and you have to try to fight for it to see who can capture it first. They've also added a pretty intense free-for-all brawl called Bounty Hunter. Basically, whoever can get the first elimination will be considered the Bounty Hunter, and then any consecutive kills after the fact that they've gotten while they're the Bounty Hunter will earn them additional points. And if you happen to eliminate the Bounty Hunter, then you become the new Bounty Hunter, and the same rules apply to you. I'm not much of an arcade guy, but it does seem like a pretty fun mode, so maybe I'll have to give it a shot. Here's the updated shot that came with the event. We can see a few of the Lunar New Year skins on there, such as the Palaquin bundle, the Zuque bundle, the Bai Hu bundle, Zwan Wu bundle, and the Quing Long bundle. They've also got a pretty cheap May skin in there as well, alongside a brand new Ramatra skin called the Biohazard Ramatra bundle. Honestly, I think this skin looks pretty dope. It's kind of like a mad scientist. And as we know from Ramatra, he's trying to protect the Omnix. So it looks like he's even willing to resort to chemical warfare with this skin. And I think it looks pretty nice. During his nemesis mode, he kind of gives off a little bit of a Bane-esque style to it. So I think it's pretty cool too. Next, I want to talk about a few things that are being worked on that you may not have heard about. First, let's talk about matchmaking. So now we know that there was supposed to be a two part matchmaking, I guess, resolution to kind of the issues that are going on right now. Um, the first part has already happened. It looks like they started part two of the changes on the 11th. So it's possible that we could see these changes anytime this week or next week. I would hope so. Maybe they're saving them for the start of season three. I don't really know yet. But in the tweet, he asked, what is the biggest issue you're personally experiencing? And for me, one of the things that I've been going through is just simply just not getting either balanced teammates or fair teams as a whole. Like the other day, I got into a game where me and my duo were found another duo queue where they were both tank and DPS. Now, if you know anything about tank currently right now, if you don't have a good tank, it's incredibly hard to win. Unfortunately, I got met with one of those tanks and also the DPS that he was dueled with really wasn't that great either. Uh, so after the game, I managed to check to see what rank they are, and neither of them were placed. I actually asked the tank what rank he was in the game, and he said he hasn't placed yet. Now, this is while I was plat 2. Keep that in mind. After the game that we very clearly lost, I went to check to see if they had any sort of stats on their profile, and it looks like the highest rank that one of them achieved was Bronze 5 in support. Now, I understand that there's different MMRs for each role, but at some point, you got to kind of understand... How is it possible that this bronze five player is in like i know he's not bronze five in this role but he's still in my plat game as a bronze five support player even though he's queued as dps now even though i pretty much only play dps there's no shot that me doing my placements games i would ever get placed bronze five so it kind of makes you wonder how this guy even got there for their tank in overwatch one the highest he ever reached was gold so I, I, for me, it's just kind of a matchmaking issue with getting balanced teams. If I lose games, I lose games. It's fine. But I at least want to lose them where I felt like it was a close game or it was a fair game. But I also want to know what your experiences are with matchmaking currently. Lastly, I want to talk about the reward system. So this is a change that is going to be made that is coming in season three. Now, for many Overwatch one players, they're very unsatisfied with the current state of the reward system considering the fact that they were getting free rewards, much more free rewards through the loot boxes in Overwatch 1. But now that the game is free to play, they've opted to choose this free to play model and remove the loot boxes. Now for clarification, in many countries, loot boxes are banned. So this isn't necessarily something that uh, they want to have to deal with, to have to deal with all these legal issues. I know they can opt to choose a different form of reward currency um, in the countries where it's banned and allowed it to be used in the countries that it's not banned but at the same time i do kind of feel like loot boxes are kind of predatory considering that i did come from apex and the way that they work over there is the most coveted item to get is an heirloom and you need to open 500 loot boxes within 500 loot boxes i should say in order to unlock one heirloom and there's like 30 legends in the game i'm not sure if you can't quote me on that but it's somewhere along the line upwards towards 30 legends so having to get maybe you have multiple mains that you want to play having to open this many loot boxes just to get one heirloom does seem kind of predatory to me but regarding the change it does look like they're going to implement something to address the lack of choice in rewards now if you're reading that and you're wondering lack of choice well there's no choice at all 
it's possible that maybe they're going to implement something as a way so where you can choose the reward that you're getting instead because maybe you're getting a reward for a hero that you don't even play or a role that you don't even play. Now, I have no way of saying whether that's what's going to happen or not, but if I were to guess, maybe something along those lines, which I think would be really beneficial for the vast majority of the player base. I know for me that the game will be fun regardless, no matter what sort of free reward system they implement. Um, but I do for I do know for many of players that they do want some sort of other way of getting some fulfillment from the game outside of competitive. So I want to know from you guys, what is something that they can implement outside of loot boxes that would encourage players to want to play more? But if you enjoyed today's video or found any of this information helpful, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to come back and see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.